Hey, good afternoon, Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Today we're going to talk about how to respect the consumer journey and to encourage them to take the next step along the path. How many times have you had a situation where you, you're looking at your website traffic and you see that your product or service page that, that you really want your clients to take the next step uh, or take the next action in a series that you know is, is how they go through the progression of making a decision um, but yet you see them, they get to that point, but, but then your, your conversion or your transition to that next page, it just doesn't happen, right? So in a progression, it's usually you're, you're spending your time, energy, and money, whether it's in social media or whether it's through various other paid or earned media strategies to drive traffic to your website, typically your homepage, and then from there, uh, you want them to take various uh, action items, whether that's, you know, click to call or, you know, learn more or shop now, whatever that call to action is, and you take them to that, that second point in the journey. And it's interesting because I, as we worked with clients in developing websites uh, over the last uh, decade and a half, I think it's been interesting to think about a First of all, a business thinks about their business one way, but consumers have a completely different idea about how they perceive your business. And if you want to take the personal out of the equation, uh, meaning if you, the, the business owner, take you out of the equation and really try to view and experience how the consumer comes along and, and experiences this journey, this path, uh, as they navigate what it's like to think about becoming a, a consumer or a customer or a client of yours. So with Google Analytics running in the background, we can sort of see the, the digital cookie crumbs, if you will, that will travel across your, your website pages. So we can see that information and we can tell where they're going, where they're leaving, how long they're staying. Now, here's the thing. So if we can map that out and understand that, and then we can take that data and talk to our internal staff, or, so that might be, you know, if you've got a receptionist or if you've got sales staff or if you've got service staff, you wanna have sort of that side-by-side -side comparison of, okay, here's what the data's showing now, Talk to us about how people come in. What do they know? Is it is it obvious they've been to the site or have they not been to the site? And that can really help you really dig deep and really understand the consumer journey when it when it comes to their their digital journey um, before becoming a client of yours. So the reason why I want to bring this up today is because I think that. Um, the best way to understand that is to, you know, a lot of people use the word funnel um, and, and sometimes I think it has a negative uh, connotation, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll use that for a construct in that obviously the funnel is much wider at the top and then becomes narrower as you move down towards the bottom of the funnel. And the idea is that your messaging and your call to action um, and your visuals at the top of the funnel, when we're talking about that marketing messaging and, and content on your website, that top part is really about awareness. They're getting to know you, they're getting to know what you're like, what kind of products you have, what kind of, you know, just, just a general awareness about who you are. So if I come to that point and I leave, then obviously there's there was a disconnect at some point there. But here's the piece that I wanna talk about. So. One of the one of the, the the things you've probably seen um, is there is a a tool or a tactic called retargeting, and retargeting retargeting helps businesses and organizations reintroduce the consumer journey once someone has left your website. So they place a little cookie; it follows you whether you're on your mobile device, whether you're on your desktop or laptop. Um, and as you go across different websites, different social media, um, 
platforms, you're able to display this uh, creative that reminds them, oh yeah. So this happened to me, I was looking at, I don't know if you guys have heard about these Felix gray glasses, but they're like, basically for people like me who work around computers and computer screens day in and day out, like my eyes get really burny and dry from staring at the screen, right? So these, these glasses um, have like this, you know, special magical unicorn dust sprinkled on them and they're supposedly fantastic. So I went to the website the other day and, you know, I was checking them out and I was checking out the different ones and I found one that I thought, well, that might be interesting. I don't wear glasses. So I wonder what that shape's going to look like on my face. So anyway, I go and like, I'm trying to find out the price. I see the price and I'm like, oh, okay, hundred bucks, fine. And then I'm like, okay, I'll come back to that later. We'll check it out. So I close the browser and I, and I, you know, move on to the next thing. The next thing I know, the next morning, I, I hit uh, my alarm goes off and my, my alarm is an app on my phone. And as, as soon as I hit the dismiss uh, button, boom, here's this big visual of a set of Felix gray glasses. I'm like, what? These guys, man, they are cyber stalking me. No, they're actually um, deploying a very smart tactic. And, and the picture that was in there was the actual glasses, the last pair of glasses that I looked at, it was those glasses. So if we think about the funnel, right, at the top, I was like, what are Felix Gray glasses? And then as I moved down and went through the pages and I got even all the way down to the very specific piece of product that I was interested in, I was like, oh yeah. And so they have a retargeting campaign set up so that it triggers and shows me those on apps, on social media. Of course, I'm seeing them in my Facebook feed, like Felix Gray glasses, you know, don't let your eyes burn to death. Um, and then they had like this one video I've, I've seen now. So I've seen a couple of different pieces of creative from them. These guys are really smart. They're, they, they're listening to my podcast, obviously, because they're, executing it flawlessly and I'm and I've just about added it uh, to my cart and I'm, and I'm ready to check out but this is the kind of strategy that that businesses and organizations need to understand that if you're not taking advantage of continuing the the consumer journey on your website and making sure that your creative um, is is segmented based on their last action um, you're, you're really missing out so you know, again, I go back to what they did, what Felix Gray did is, is they didn't show me an ad with the, like the logo of, of Felix Gray with like, you know, a generic set of their glasses. They showed me the very specific glasses that I was looking at, right? So they re-engaged me. I was already went through awareness, went through the middle of looking at all the options, got down to the, the to, to almost the very end of the funnel uh, where I'm adding those glasses to my cart and checking out. Um, and they could have done a lot of things, but but they're they're smart and they're executing and they're meeting me where I am in my journey with their product or service. And that's what you guys need to be thinking about when you're really wanting to respect their journey and make sure that when you reintroduce yourself after they visited your website, so, you want to make sure that, okay, you've identified here are the three, the four, the five, or the eight core areas of our website where people are moving along the consumer digital journey and make sure that your creative is, is targeted in, in matching that experience so that when you have that reminder ad come up in Facebook or Instagram, um, you know, or, or on apps or just websites across, uh, you know, the internet, that that piece of creative that they see is the right piece of creative based on the last step that they took, right? Not just some generic, you know, hi, we're Felix Gray glasses, try us on, right? Too general. I'm, I've already made it past awareness. I'm, I'm already at a, a different step. So that's what's really critical. And, and I think that the better companies can understand what retargeting is and how to effectively leverage it to respect the consumer journey, the better you're going to convert and the better experience uh, your potential clients and, and customers are gonna have. Now, even if you're not selling something, if you don't sell products, but you provide a service, this still applies to you because there's going to be steps along the journey 
of if I'm going to select you to be my service provider for whatever that is, whether I'm getting, you know, my lawn done or my haircut or, you know, my taxes done, whatever that is, you know, there's steps and, and those steps are a, a logical progress. So if we go back to what we began the talk with today, the first thing you want to do is you need to, first of all, get your ego out of the way. And just because you think you know what your clients do, first of all, take that data, take the scientific data that Google is monitoring as people go through your website and it shows you that little path, how they sort of follow the digital breadcrumb that they leave. Um, look at that, take that information, map it out, print it out, get together with your staff, and let's talk about the consumer journey and what we think it is, and then let's compare that and, and lay it on top of what the data actually says. And then we can really understand what the consumer looks like when they are taking the digital steps along their path to making a decision whether or not they're going to select your company and your business as the one they want to do business with. So that is, that's a smart play guys. And I hope that you will check it out. Um, if you want to take a deeper dive, you can Google ad roll retargeting 101. So ad a D R O L L retargeting 101. Um, so ad roll is a great platform that um, can provide companies with the ability to place their ads and, and get those retargeting campaigns set up. Um, it's very user friendly and um, their 101 page is fantastic. I highly recommend if you're, if you've never done retargeting before and you want to learn more about it and have it explained, they use very non techy non jargony language. Um, and I think you'll find it very helpful in, in thinking about, uh, especially if you're listening to this video or podcast today, I hope that you'll take a deeper dive and, and reach into that and take a look. Um, so, Today is, uh, is Thursday. Happy Pi Day, everyone, 314. Um, my name is Michael Wynn, and I am the Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Don't forget, tomorrow is Friday, which means it's Traction Day. We're going to make traction and grow our business. I'll be joined by Katie Lilly from Lilyfield Accounting Solutions, and we'll be going through the next chapter of Traction, which is a fantastic book on how to scale and grow your business. So look forward to it, guys. We will see you tomorrow.